Hello, my name is Robbie. Can you tell me your full name, please? My name is Asya Sidokina. And can you tell me where you're from? I am from Moscow in Russia. Okay. And can I see your identification, please? Please. Okay, thank you very much. Now, in this first part, I'd like to know a little bit about yourself. So, to begin with, tell me a little about your garden, or a garden you know well. Well, I live in an apartment, so I don't have a garden. However, I have a favorite park. Um, it, it's my favorite park because uh, my first school mm -hmm. was located uh, at the edge of the park and had a back door which would lead into the center of the park, which I loved very much. So uh, in break, recess or field trips, we would um, go to the park and we would always have like um, games and stuff like that. And these memories, re I really like them. So. Uh, okay. And so if you had a garden, would you prefer a flower garden or a vegetable garden? Uh, I'm not sure which one, but I would say vegetable garden because, um, well, there's a vegetable garden gives you a product which you can also um, use or you, is it nutrition, so you can eat it and uh, you can see it grow and uh, the process, you can see it while well, a flower garden is just, uh, well, grass or plants just mm -hmm. there. So. Okay. Why do you think so many people like gardening? Um, maybe it uh, connects them with the nature or and they find it relaxing or an um, interesting hobby for them. I mm -hmm. don't know, maybe. Okay. Yeah. So I'd like to move on to talk about pets. Do you have a pet? Yes, I have a dog. You have a dog, okay. Um, why do so many people like to have pets? Uh, there's, they're men's best friend, I guess. So mm -hmm. uh, they're great companions that you can teach them, you can uh, travel with them, and they will always stay your friend and always uh, part of your family. So. Mm -hmm. And how do people's lives change when they have a pet? Well, the responsibility changes a lot. They have a responsibility of a new life. They have to take care of the pet, feed it, uh, walk it, especially dogs. Um, and of course, each pet has its own requirements. There are also special pets who maybe have illnesses mm -hmm. or other pets who are uh, more active or something which need more exercise. Okay. And uh, what can people learn from animals? Patience. Yeah. Patience and well, people with temper can, uh, well, temper. They need to. They can uh, learn to calm it down because sometimes pets, when they don't listen, you get frustrated and then mm -hmm. you really want to, you know, do something so the pet starts listening to you. Well, you can learn patience. So that the pet is like a child; it needs time to learn. So. Okay, right. I'd like now to ask some questions about marriage. Uh, what traditions are involved with marriage in your country? Um, in Russia, mostly, like many other countries, um, the man proposes. Mm -hmm. uh, mostly it's a traditional wedding in a church, mostly Orthodox. And there would always be a reception at the end with a lot of dancing, traditional mm -hmm. foods. Uh, yeah, uh, yes. Okay. Do you think that people meeting on the internet can lead to a good marriage? It depends what kind of person it is, or what kind of people it is. If uh, it's a correct match, why not? Of course, if uh, it's 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 just the beginning of a relationship. It's like meeting someone on the street and asking them um, to go for a coffee or something. It just mm -hmm. start from the internet. It doesn't okay. really matter. Uh, what are your feelings about arranged marriages? I I'm absolutely against them. I think that a person should have. Uh, his or her own choice of who he wants to, he or she wants to spend their entire life with. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think that it's not the parent's um, responsibility or choice, but it should be the person who, if, who wants to get married, who is in love with this person to get married and not because they're supposed to. Okay. And what are people's attitudes to divorce in your country? Almost like any other, I mean, it's always either the man or the woman, or both. It just doesn't work mm -hmm. in marriage. It, there's no real um, difference to other countries. Divorce, you go to, uh, you uh, get documents, you sign them, and that's pretty much it. So. Okay. Right, now I'm going to give you a topic, and I'd like you to talk about it for one to two minutes. And before you talk, you'll have one minute to think about what you're going to say, and you can make some notes if you wish. Do you understand? Okay. Yes. Okay, so here is your topic and take a minute to think about it.
Okay, thank you. Now you've only got one to two minutes. Don't worry if I stop you. you know? Okay. No okay, problem. off you go. So um, the child I'm going to talk about is my brother. His name is Boris Sidohin. Uh, he's, uh, he's 13 years old and two years younger than me. He's in the same school as I, uh, in the eighth grade, yes. He speaks the same languages as me, English, Russian, and German. Uh, he, oh, he, uh, over the past year or two, he started to grow extremely. Now he's almost the same size, uh, almost higher than me which a little freaks me out because, well, he's always my small brother. Mm -hmm. That's always been the tiny one. Um, he's extremely athletic, um, plays uh, soccer. It's his favorite sport. He's been playing soccer since he was five. Uh, every day after school, he has training uh, with my father, who is enthusiastic with, uh, about his passion. Mm -hmm. um, because of his sports enthusiasm and soccer, he's extremely thin. Mm -hmm. Very bony. <laughs> uh, he he's as I said before. He's my size. He has blonde hair as me. He has uh, blue eyes, and looks a lot like my mom. Well, uh, he's always been my kid brother, so I always loved him a lot. Of course, he gets annoying sometimes, as most small brothers do. Um, for example, there was a story when uh, he. He was two, I was four. Mm -hmm. We were um, walking down the street and uh, as every child, he gets tired of walking himself. So he uh, starts crying and then apparently he sits down on the pavement on the side of, uh, on the middle of the road. And my, as a normal parents, he would, um, my mom says, uh, okay, you wanna stay here, please? We're gonna go, we're gonna go. So I, she took my hand and she told me to walk forward while my brother just sat on the pavement mm -hmm. back. I started to get um, scared that my mom would actually leave my brother there. So I would start crying myself and sit down on the pavement and wait until my mom Okay, came. thank you. And do you think you'll continue to get on with him as you get older? Hopefully, if he, do, if he accepts, accepts me. Okay. <laughs> Right, um, I'd like to ask now some questions related to this topic. So to begin with, I'd like to talk about childhood. So what kind of things make up a happy childhood? Um, a happy childhood comes at firstly from the parents. That's my opinion. So if the parents are enthusiastic and happy and uh, about having a child and giving the child the best that they can, then, uh, then there's no better childhood that you can think of. Mm -hmm. So... What kind of things should parents do to be good role models for their children? They're supposed they're mu they must be responsible responsible and um, responsible from for their own sake. Mm -hmm. uh, as people as parents that are not responsible would go drinking and would uh, sometimes even uh, hurt their children, mm -hmm. which I think is absolutely irresponsible and should be uh, illegal everywhere. Uh, so. Uh, parents should be responsible and take care of their children and only want the best for them. Okay, what things have you learned from your childhood about bringing up a child? It's extremely hard. Yeah. Yes, uh, so, uh, every child varies, so if, it's a, if a child is um, like their parents, then um, it's easier for them to confine in them and to relate to them so they would know what to do, for example. Mm -hmm. Uh, however, there are different kind of children, so you never know. There's a, you can't exactly say it. Okay. And how has childhood changed since you were young? Well, uh, I am on the last brick of um, of uh, of the century where, or the generation where, technology hasn't taken out everything. Mm -hmm. So when I was younger. I still had uh, wooden or uh, dolls and toys like that, while um, the generation that is coming after me or right now will have only technology, computer screens, video games, mm -hmm. which is uh, kind of scary. Yeah. Okay, I'll move on now to talk about growing up. Uh, what are some of the challenges of growing up in your country nowadays? Uh, well, in Russia, especially in Moscow, it's a very large city, mm -hmm. so... Uh, well, the apartments, so it's so crowded or extremely crowded that uh, the apartments aren't as big as they would be in other countries. Mm -hmm. um, I guess the environment is much different. It's more polluted. It's so many cars, so many people. It's dangerous. Um, 
so um yeah so children need uh to grow up a little more to i mean go out alone than they would in other safe mm -hmm. countries okay how do parents punish their children in your country in russia when there's punishment it's it, it gets really loud okay <laughs> uh yeah especially with the mother mm -hmm. and uh, the daughter uh, from my own experience mm -hmm. um sometimes also um uh, a physical punishment uh, i mean not terrible physical beating mm -hmm. but sometimes i don't know um you know slap on the butt on a small kid or a mm -hmm. tugging of the ear okay something like that is appropriate okay um how do you feel about corporal punishment from my opinion, it's horrible and should be banished from everywhere, uh, against, never, ever, ever. So I, I think that's not to, yes, you have a temper, but you shouldn't take it out on your children. Mm -hmm. If you, they annoy you, well, that's what children are there for, to annoy you. So mm -hmm. okay. you, can't, <laughs> you can't change it. And um, finally, how do you think the challenge of growing up will change over the next 20 years? Well, as I said before, uh, technology will take over the world fully and um, the children will become lazier, won't want to work, will have to stay with their parents and may, won't accomplish as much as maybe the generations before us. Mm. So that's my worry. Okay. Right. Thank you very much. That's no the end of the test.